another point. <laughs> and for what? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes post-game show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Liam Merrill here with Steve Peters, Craig Morgan. It's 11 p.m. on the dot. Mm. These late night games. They're... 10 p.m. Pacific, though. Are we changing back to that, Craig? Have you we got that should. sorted out yet? House is not listening to me. <sighs> nope. Yeah. Senate's already, need... uh, you know, got them in and my And the back Coyotes pocket, but... said, you know what? Why not overtime, too? Thank God it didn't go yeah, to a freaking shootout. let's just make them shootout. start that show a little bit later. My God. It's all right. I'm just here to talk about vampires anyway, so... We'll, we will be talking we'll, about vampires we'll again. And cocaine bears again and cocaine, in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> we, we already know that at these after, if a show starts after 11, yeah. off the rails guaranteed. For sure. But we will try our very best to, to talk, talk about the game. Um, and this was like kind of a messy game. It was, a, it was a close score in the end. But man, Vancouver did not look good. They made the Coyotes look good at parts when the Coyotes maybe didn't look good because the Coyotes made a ton of... Dumb mistakes tonight too. Yeah. It just felt like a sloppy one. Yeah, for me that first period was uh, was a good road period. Yeah, that was the best period. Of the yeah, game. it was just because it was a sloppy muck it up. Nobody had really good chances. Fisher gets the goal in the first period. Ends up one one after one. I thought it was a good road period. I, yeah. I really did. And, I, and as poorly as you said it already, Vancouver was. They didn't look good. No. Like they, they're they're usually a team that plays with speed and pace. They and look I, dead. Yeah, I just didn't see that. The crowd wasn't into it. No. So, what, so what that crowd, was perfect. What crowd was there, by the way? Exactly. Uh, a reporter in Vancouver, by the way, sent me a photo of the crowd in Vancouver. Move the team. That's what I said. And the so ice you, didn't look great either. No. And you know who has great ice? Oh, yeah. Mullet Arena. Mullet Arena. Wait, wait, what's Herb going on here? That. Don't worry um, about it. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that, that, that the first period was exactly what they wanted. Unfortunately, if not for Vamelka, this game is over. By the end of the second, like yeah. he they, again, too many quality scoring and, chances. And if against. not for a little bit of bad luck for Vancouver, two goals called off in the second period, one for a, a penalty, penalty that had been called, and then one for yeah. the, the net going off. Which I know there was some controversy seemingly about that. I yeah, felt like they been. made the right call. Yeah, by the rule, they made the right call. I thought the penalty was really soft. That that I would. They, I would yeah. argue that more so yeah. as a Vancouver fan than the second one. Yeah, the first one to me, I thought that was a soft penalty too. Yeah, it was just it, it looked worse than it was from the angle the referee right. saw it. When you saw it from the other angle, you'll go, "Gosh, I don't know if that was really a call." But, mm -hmm. but again, it, it goes back to the when Vimelka is good, this team has a chance, and and he made some he made unbelievable some saves. unbelievable saves. He kept them the, this game. <laughs> which we would have liked could have been over in regulation, in regulation. At, least, at least for the team staying in it to the end but he made that shot i mean that save that's elias petterson yeah, yeah they're right their best the end player of the game. That with the game on game on his stick, game on his stick. unbelievable yeah veggie's... and then they got a, a breakaway in overtime too and yeah so you got to give it to veggie and, yeah. and i'm i'm one of his harshest critics and and you can't fault him right now the way he's played in november and now the start of december and his numbers are phenomenal and they don't get a point without him tonight Unfortunately, he's not the king of the game. I know we're not there yet, Lee. I'm jumping ahead, but but we wanted to make sure he got his flowers. Yeah, we today. wanted we yeah. wanted to give him some recognition because go ahead. He's someone ahead. he's someone that luck seems to go his way a lot because he still is uh, plays a little bit out of. Yeah, I tell you what, he's still. But when he needs, but when he is called upon, it feels like he's been a bit more consistent this year. PD, I have a theory that he's playing with the. Uh, remember the old time crease where it's a big. Went beyond the uh, yeah. Net. I have a theory that he's, he's still playing, playing in those there. dimensions. <laughs> <sighs> it may be because boy, does he slide around a lot, and he's still outside. But I, yeah. I can't fault his what? What's he's Stop given the them? A, yeah. You know what? Stop he's the given them a chance yep. to win every night, and that's all you can ask for from your goalie. So I, I appreciate that about him. So. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. We talked about keeping it close and exciting, and doing the best they can to be until the end. I don't know if I could say that I felt like this game was very exciting, though. I don't know if yeah. I felt at any point I was really. We were on our the end, feet. The last few minutes. The last minute, like with that breakaway, we were like, oh, it was an unbelievable save. But 
there were moments this game kind of lulled you. And again, that's a good thing for the Coyotes on the road is to lull teams into this kind of a game, especially a team that has speed like Vancouver and can open up offensively. They do have that ability. And to lull them into this kind of game, I think, plays into the Coyotes' hands. And they're going to have to do it the next two games because the next two games in Alberta with Calgary and Edmonton, those are teams that are unbelievably gifted offensively. So the the more lulling they can do, the better to get these teams sleepy. And we can talk about sleepy because <laughs> we, we know that very well here. <laughs> That's true. Well, I'll wake you up right now and scare you with the numbers from so this game. <laughs> and tell what, Shane, did you see the Advent beer today? Somebody already drank the Advent yeah, beer. Yeah, Max drank it. And he, you know what? He opened it warm and drank it. I'm okay with Max drinking it. I mean, Max is making they, all this happen. So. And also... Team USA lost today. Yes, he needed, needed a needed consolation beer. I mean, and it wasn't a very inspired performance. Though. Look at GMT. Just, the Americans uh, either. Like, just talking about cocaine beer. Just Google the thing. If you haven't, I know we're It's we're a real thing. We're not it's just. It's a thing. No, it's, it's a movie. Real. And it's not just a D movie. Like, this is Ray Liotta's last movie before he passed yeah, away. The like, this is a real movie. Oh, wait, no, that's just the movie. So if you haven't Sorry. seen the trailer, go see the freaking trailer because I'm lining up at, at one the theater. point, I was Sorry. queuing up the numbers from this game and somehow we talked about but cocaine bear again. Cocaine bear. Don't coke the bear. Um, but let's look at the numbers <laughs> because a holy moly, first of all. Um, holy moly. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG. Um, <laughs> Coyotes, once again, not many shots on goal. Uh, you know, a, a pattern for them. 32 shots for the Canucks. Finally got back on the power play board, if you will. I don't know. Jacob Chikrin power play goal. Finally, finally, finally. We'll get to that in a sec. You guys, Vancouver was two for okay, eight. eight. Two for eight. I wonder eight. if anybody thought before the game that penalties might be a key. Eight. Huh. Eight. <laughs> eight. Oh, eight. Good you did there. And, and then bump, Arizona bump. had 19 blocks and Vancouver had seven. And yeah, let's just jump right into Petey's keys from here because Petey, even the way you said it, no penalties mean it this time. And they didn't listen. Yeah, so to protect the house, I I, I think he, if not for Vimalco, we've already talked about that, how good this team was around the net, and I thought they had a lot of chances. The penalties, are you out of your mind? They are two over-the-glass penalties for delay a game and two too many. That's four penalties that are completely self-inflicted, like absolutely completely self-inflicted penalties, and it's the difference of the game. They get two goals on the power play, the Vancouver Canucks do, and of their three, two are on the power play. You did it to yourself. <sighs> Shoot. I, I still think this team needs to get more pucks on net. Yeah. I think they still try to make one more pass. I think they try to put passes through seams. I don't think they deliver enough pucks to the net because when they do, good things happen. And I don't know if Martin was as sharp tonight, and I just don't think he was as tested. He definitely wasn't as tested as Vamelka. You didn't go, oh my gosh, what an amazing save. You're like, shoot the puck. Yes. <sighs> So they did not. And yes, I, I, yet I thought case. Vancouver could have shot the puck more tonight too, including on a five on three when they had zero shots. Well, on that, that that could have been the TSN turning point. Could have been. Like you get a five on three power play, and you've got some pretty gifted hockey players on the ice during that five on three. I mean, they had you know Hughes is out there, Pedersen's out there. Like nobody wanted to shoot. Nobody wanted to shoot the puck, and when they did, they shot it high and wide. So that was a huge penalty kill for the Coyotes back to back kills on that. Yeah, uh, they just, I mean, like you already said, four of those eight, just dumb. And then it feels like, too, they would be on a power play and they would take a penalty while on the power play and it would go to four on four. And this is something we've seen not just tonight, but a lot recently. Yeah. And it's painful. And, you know, we're, we're sitting here being real, realistic about wanting them to lose games. We said we're annoyed that they got a point tonight when they could have. But, like, just if you're going to play a, a game and lose, at least tidy up things that are in your control yeah, yeah. no it, question it's five on five they they have to win five on five yeah their power play finally gets back on the board tonight which is huge because that had been struggling and we said it and i'm gonna give phx a little bit of credit here what did we say they needed to do mix it up you gotta do something different so what did they do richie comes not only off the power play out of the lineup yeah which i gotta guess moderately surprised there chicken moves from the right flank to the left flank and what happens? They score because they you have to mix it up. You, the futility was just getting it was again since Schmaltz came back in the lineup with Chickren, they hadn't scored. Yeah. 
So I'm glad they made an adjustment there and they made some changes on the power play. I like Chikrin coming down that left side better. I, I think as it showed, he was able to, to to provide more there. I'd really like to see him on the top two pounding away that one timer, but I'm glad they made the change. A couple questions. Nick Ritchie's out of the lineup. I, I got a feeling just like a lot of these other guys, it might just be a beat, right? Take a step back. Hey, you're not, you're not producing. You've got two assists yeah. in your last 10 games, no goals. Not really. Hasn't really been a net front presence or a threat recently, so they pull him out. I can't believe he's going to be out of the lineup for long. Malamaki was out for one game. You know, they, they pulled Dylan Gunther out for one game. Matias Michelli out for one game. There's Zach some value Cassian in that, and you've got numbers. today, too. What's that? Zach Cassian. Yeah, Zach Cassian. That's a little bit different story. I, I don't really feel like he's given them much all season. Um, what I wanted to ask you, and I haven't asked Andre Turigny this yet because I'm a bad reporter. <laughs> What value is there in going with 11 forward forwards and seven defensemen? He likes it. But he, what, what what's the value? What, well, what, what he's saying the value is, is it gives an opportunity to the players, his high-end players, an opportunity to play in two shifts. So he'll put a Keller down with this tonight. It was Gunther and Hayden playing on the fourth line. He has an opportunity to rotate a Schmaltz in there, Keller in there. Um, Kraus can go in that spot. So he can get his more elite goal-scoring players more ice time. Mm-hmm. And it gives him more options on the back end where he's got some, and he clearly needs penalty killers. He's got three defensemen that he puts out consistently on the back end, right? And they're getting killed with all that PK time. And then you've got Chicker and Agassiz Bear taking all the time on the power play. I think it give him, gives him more options to rotate defensemen when they're killing so many penalties. I think it's hard to manage a bench like that. It's surprising that they do it as often as they do. Um, I watched a game with the Minnesota Wild the other night. They did 11-7, and seven, but it's because they were missing forwards that were injured, and so they had the opportunity to play the extra defenseman. I, I find it rare when you have healthy forwards ready to play to do the 11-7 tw- the versus 12 forwards because, you again, it's it's jumbling lines. And one of the other thing, Craig, that it does when you're jumbling lines with that extra forward and you're taking penalties – and you have power plays, it is hard to get the rhythm and, and keep track of who's going where. So your right. ice time gets a little bit more varied. Um, they seem to have success with it, though. So I'm, I'm not going to argue with what he's doing because it seems to be working. Are you going to ask him this oh, week? I will, you know, yeah. when they finally come back home. Seriously. For a, a lengthy period of time. We had, we had one availability, by the way, when they came home from the last one. They gave him two days off, and then it was a, you better get this in quickly because we're getting on a plane. Plane, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well... Coming back around to it, Jacob Chikrin finally got a power play goal. What a shot, too, huh? Yeah. Unbelievable shot. Yeah. Um, and from Gosper Michelli, Michelli another assist tonight. He's been, he's been, he's been in a pass first mentality. That was something we were. He still tonight. is. He's got to shoot the yeah. puck. He's got to get. He's and I don't know chances. if it's confidence. Again, I keep thinking he's deferring to guys. Oh, you guys do it. And I know he's a good playmaker. And they're talking to him about it too. They're telling him, hey. This is not going to last. You're, he, Andre said it. You can't was be a one trick like pony. Was he like that in you, Tucson? No, no. Wasn't he no. leading them but in he's, goals? He's deferring. I think you're absolutely right. He's but playing it, around all these he veterans. He wants to be unselfish. He's like he's the young guy. Yeah. He's the new guy. Yeah. But they keep telling him it's not going to last. You're not going to have success if you keep doing that. Teams are going to figure you out that you're just a passer, and then they're going to yeah. take that away. He's going to take, take start yeah. taking that opportunity. He's absolutely yeah. going to have to start shooting the puck more. Um. Can't argue with him though. He's leading all rookies in assists right now, yeah. so he's clearly doing something right. Yeah. But but he is going to have to start taking a little he's, more chances yeah. offensively. Yeah. Well, two players who also got assists tonight, not your usual Liam O'Brien and Yusuf Balamaki, um, on that Christian Fisher goal, his second in two games. Second in two games. Almost an identical goal, like a break, kind of a breakaway really five hole, like literally yeah. identical. It was bizarre. He knew where he was um, shooting, like when as soon as he got the puck, I think. Yeah, yeah, and and um, you know this one was five on five versus the shorthanded goal the other night, but his fifth of the season. Thrilled for fish, and for that reason, he's our DraftKings King of the Game tonight. He deserves it. And the Fisherman, <laughs> one goal, love it. Um, shout out to fish and we considered um we considered veggie if, if did, it was if, if they won veggie probably would have been king but i'm happy for fisher because he deserves it he has looked good the last couple games so he absolutely he does it. everything fisher does and we've said this before it's about his work ethic and when he pulls up his bootstraps and works for this team i mean he is a coyote he wants to be a coyote. He said, I do anything for this team. And I think he proves it again tonight. Him getting back to back goals is fifth of the year now. 
And he's a guy that said he wanted to see if he can get 20 goals a season. Just puts him on pace. His, his, you know, his career high is 15. And, yep. and this is, he's, 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 he's finally getting some pucks to go in the net for him. And, yep. he, and he has had difficulties with that over the last few seasons. And we, we, we are all Christian Fisher fans here because he's a friend of the program. He is a friend of the program. And he wants to be your yeah. next walking and walking talking. Walking and guy. talking. He asked Petey, when can I do walking no. and talking? Yeah, he might have earned it now. You should probably put him off a couple times just to <laughs> be, really build it. Exactly. <laughs> just we got to get Bugstead in there too, don't we? Oh, oh, oh my God. Man? The whole just thing would just be both. asking just about Minnesota. Minnesota guys. Yeah, just, yeah, you yeah. need to walk to and from, yeah. back and forth, and yeah. back and forth, and yeah, back and forth. Yeah, that's what will happen. Yeah, just to. The Bugstead one might get a little long. Yeah. Can we hold hands the whole too? Show? Oh boy! Oh man! No. Too much. Oh. Moving right along. Moving right along. I bet you a uh, Fisher anytime goal would have paid out well. I on bet the it would have tonight. Sportsbook app, um, because you know you don't necessarily think of Christian Fisher when you think of goal scoring on this team, but he's proven that for himself. And like we talked about, he's been going for it. So. Much respect to him. Um, you can make some money on the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. The Phoenix Suns have been hot, minus last night when they got upset by Houston, but we won't talk about that. But there's a ton of ways to win money on the NBA right now. So if you haven't downloaded the DraftKings Sportsbook app yet, sign up with the code PHNX, place a $5 pregame money line bet on any NBA team to win their game. You get $150 in free bets if they do. That's code PHNX only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for detail. And Sean's pick of the week cannot be the Buffalo Bills because they already played. Yeah. So, true. Sean, uh -oh. what is your DraftKings pick of the week? Um, well, like you said, yeah, can't pick the Bills. I'm going to just stay away from football for this weekend for that reason. Um, if you didn't know... There is an Arizona-based college basketball team that is currently in the first in first place in the Pac-12, and it is not Leah's Arizona Wildcats. It is it is the Arizona State Sun Devils. Uh, they play game two of conference play tomorrow night against the Stanford Cardinal. Um, and by the way, if you didn't know, uh, fuck the Stanford tree. I hate their dumbass mascot. It's <laughs> the dumbass mascot on the planet. The so, um, <laughs> so my DraftKings sports pick of the week is Arizona State minus four and a half against Stanford tomorrow, mm. um, and. Whether I'm right or wrong, you can see me talk about it after the game. PHNX Sun Devils post game show. Just out of Happy. curiosity, who do who do the uh, last place Wildcats play? Can you? Oh, who do they do? They play tomorrow. Oh, they play the Cal Golden Bears, who are on the verge of of just being demoted out of the conference because they're so bad, <laughs> just like just like football. Um, so don't lose to them, or you that, that'll be embarrassing. Okay. <sighs> All right, I survived that one. Um, that's John's DraftKings pick of the week. So, did I did I tell everybody that Arizona lost to Utah? So I'm going to be drinking I'm some sure Four Peaks beer. Okay, you should. Yeah, that's tomorrow. fine to reiterate that. A lot of people have been pointing out this Four Peaks holiday cheer box that is on our table, which is it's pretty sweet, fantastic. It's absolutely unbelievable. So we've had I think it's been three so far right kilt lifter hazy what was the other one and, uh, so day one was an imperial hazy IPA tall boy Ooh. and then tall boy a tall boy wow. uh yesterday right. was um yesterday was a bo a glass bottle of kilt lifter I know and then today was and a then today was a, just a normal can of hazy yeah. IPA. apparently I have heard I cannot confirm or deny but I have sources that have told me that there are some beers that don't even that they don't even make anymore in here. Is there um, so you can get some kind of limited? Is there like beers. a forty in there, or I don't know? Is there <laughs> cocaine beer in there? Oh my god! I think we up. draw the that, line with that. That, that might be day twenty four. We'll have okay. to see. <laughs> Exactly, right. exactly. Well, you can grab one of these boxes for yourself, and if you get one even a little late, it, you can drink your, the first three days one through three. It doesn't matter, or give them. To, as gifts to your friends and family um they have a limited supply of their advent calendar box it's 55 dollars. there's 24 beers in here for 55 dollars unbelievable um and they're like we said specialty beers tall boys and more you can purchase at the a street pub in tempe and i know team usa lost today but the vibes at four peaks amazing there was a lineup of 75 plus people that was pretty well cool. before the bar opened and there were 377 Fans there at eight in the morning on a Saturday. You have to stay tuned because I know Max wants to do. They're gonna do gonna more. Do some I know Mexico and the U.S. are out, but there's gonna be more things at Who four. Are we peaks. adopting which which nation are we um, adopting? Owen is adopting Senegal because they're playing England, and as we know, Owen is Welsh and hates England. Yes, uh, so. I'll I'll rock with Senegal too. I'm personally I'm a French soccer fan, based on the teams that are left, but I also kind of want Messi to win. 
So go Argentina. Fair enough. Maybe. Fair enough. Um, well, if you're going to drink Four Peaks, you must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. Um, we talked about Jacob Chikrin's goal, which is great. Every time he scores, every time he assists, it's boosting his trade value little by little. And Craig, there were some scouts in attendance tonight yeah. that were pretty interesting. Glad you wrote them down because I, I forgot them. <laughs> yeah, so. so I have the list here of the pro scouts. There are, you know, there's obviously scouts at every NHL game, a am- mix of amateur and pro. So tonight in Vancouver, there were Maple Leafs and Lightning scouts in attendance who were what we've heard to be regulars in Vancouver. Yeah, the way scouting works, like there's some guys that literally live in a city, so they're there all the time. You'll see yeah. the Coyotes have this. There, there are scouts that I see at every one of their games, yeah. but then it's it's when the scouts pop in that you haven't seen in a long while, then you're like, huh, wonder what you're doing here. So those teams were the Bruins, the Penguins, and the Kings. Penguins, and, and listen, we don't know why the Penguins were in town. I want to I want to make that very clear, okay? Put the tinfoil hats on. Let's but do it. <laughs> those other two teams, you've definitely heard those teams linked to Jacob Chikram before. And who did Pittsburgh just lose for a while? I think, uh, they I think lost Latang. To, yeah, a guy named Chris oh, Latang. So horrible. so, just saying, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But so is Crosby coming back in that one? Oh Crosby, my. Matthews, McDavid. <laughs> Somehow all three of them. Can you imagine? Why not? Hey, you know how like I think we've talked about this before, where like LeBron creates super teams. Yes. And stuff? Why can't we have one yeah, here? Right. That's why he's the greatest because he created super teams. Yeah, Spencer made it really did make a good win. point. That point though, Penguins, you and what assets? It's true they don't really have a ton of assets, but. Hey, we don't know. We know what's happened here. We don't know what's happened. We don't know. We don't know. know. It's our tinfoil hat. But but... LeBron is not the GOAT. Michael Jordan is. Just want to get that out there as well. That's a lie. That's wrong. It's not not even close. One guy stayed with a team that drafted him, took whatever they had, and built a a championship team. The other guy just, you know, basically recruited guys to go play. Let's let's put together the best team possible and still has a losing record in the finals. But anyway, we're moving on to back to hockey. Let's go. Back to hockey. Um, speaking of assets, when the Coyotes traded Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland to the Vancouver Canucks, they received a draft pick back that turned into Dylan Gunther. Yes, they did. And this did. was Dylan Gunther's first time playing against those guys. Um, so it, it kind of feels like the tr- you know the two traded players, three traded players playing all against each other. Oh, we all looked, had a scary moment tonight. McBain hit him in the knee. He thought, ooh. And he ended up back on the ice so and saved a goal pretty yep, much at yep. one point later in the game. Connor Garland, he's kind of had a, a quieter had a season. season. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's if you're in Vancouver at all, it's a rough season. Kind of a Truth. bummer for the Canucks. But Truth. what do you guys what are your feelings now that the dust has settled on that trade? Oh well, seeing OEL and Garland in the the amazing reverse retro. Well, I know everybody today, hated to see Connor Garland Garland go out yeah. of town, right? Uh, that that was the tough piece. Everybody understood at that point that the relationship was irreparable with Oliver Ekman Larson. And let's be frank, his game had diminished dramatically. He's not the player that we saw, you know, in the middle part of the past decade when he was, you know, leading the league and he was scoring 20 goals a season and that fluid skater and that unbelievable player that we saw come up, of course, during the playoff years. He just wasn't that player anymore. So to be able to unload that contract is still one of, Bill Armstrong's best moves to get get it off the books and to get a first round pick back was unbelievable because he had lost it, of course, with the uh, with the scandal, with the scouting combine. So, I mean, it, we, we don't know what Dylan Gunther's going to be yet. We've seen glimpses so far. He's not fully ready yet. That uh, continues to be my take when I watch Dylan Gunther. But you got rid of that contract. And now Vancouver might be t- trying to get rid of that contract. They might be going into rebuild. And and when you look at Connor Garland's game now, you think, okay, maybe you know, maybe he caught lightning in a bottle. Maybe this was just the right place for him because he he really hasn't been able to recapture it. I still like the way he plays. He plays hard all the time. He doesn't cheat you, but he just hasn't been that productive for them. Who's Frank? Frank. Let's be frank. I don't know who the hell is Frank. Um, Oliver's still getting power play ice time. He gets hurt in the end board, so his ice time is diminished tonight. He's still a guy that they're getting a lot, eating eating a lot of minutes for this team. Garland's been a healthy scratch. Definitely not playing the role he played here in Arizona as as an offensive goal-scoring guy. So right now, if you have to go from today going forward, it's not even close. Like the Arizona Coyotes win this trade if it's Trade Talk Tuesday. I'm sorry to, I, I love OEL and Garland both, but he, Gunther's career is just beginning. Yeah, 
And so, and so in the long term, the, you, you think he's going to have, you can't go what Garland and OEL did in the past because they've got a, a large resume, but that's the past. So going forward, I think it's Gunther, but I don't know what happens with this Vancouver Canuck team. I, I just don't know. This is a team that was, people were talking about potentially being a playoff team this year. Well, I think some people here had them in the playoffs. Now, this is a team that... Oh, it, they, they've got to be thinking draft. They you might know? be. They might be right down there with Tank the Alley's got to be coming and, and Anaheim and Bruce. There it is. How's that working? So that that to me is the biggest piece of this puzzle is the Bruce Boudreaux thing. Until they make that change, this team is not going to win. And maybe that's the plan. So you hang on to him. You're already paying Travis Green. You're now paying Bruce Boudreaux. Why make the change now? Make the change in the summer. Let's see if we can lose. And and maybe the balls fall our way and we get Connor Bedard. And now we got Elijah Pedersen, Connor Bedard. Well, okay. Now let's flip coaches. Now let's make a run for it. Two great comments from Blatantly Asinine. Uh, first of all, said, I hydrate daily on the tears of Vancouver fans crying over OEL's Albatross contract. And then the OEL trade was straight robbery and we're lucky GMBA hasn't been arrested. <laughs> um, and then Nick said, Vancouver's top line is way too good to be tanking. That would be crazy. But I think Vancouver is an interesting example in what a f- an incomplete team trying to be competitive, mm-hmm. how they can fall. And this is a, a really good reminder, I think, for Coyotes fans and to exercise some patience because it's so easy to, you know, see all these. I mean, look at the skill on Vancouver. Like Nick said, you have you have Pedersen, you have, you know, well, Bo Harvat and ha- Besser, Horvath. who's having a tough year. But you've got some really yeah. good players on this team. It happens so often when a team takes a we talked about this before, when a team takes a, a big step forward one season, you think, oh, my God, OK, here we go. It's this. No, often it's, oops, back here, and now you got to start building again. They weren't ready, but I think they got a little too excited by the playoff success they had that one season, and they they made some dumb moves. They made some dumb moves, and now, I mean, we talk about them maybe trying to rebuild. Can you? When you look at that, when you look at their cap situation? And their contracts, you, yeah. Yeah, it's... It it they put themselves in a, a tough position, and it, yeah. I, it wasn't this GM, it wasn't Patrick Alvin, it was the previous GM. So they're in a bad spot right now because they have this high end talent. And I'm and listen, I'm not even I'm not even as high on some of the players as other people are. I think Quinn Hughes is still a disaster defensively, but they have some talent on that roster. But they're they're kind of stuck with what they've got unless they can make some big moves. I I don't know if you can move. Oliver Ekman Larson's contract well, again. And, and It'd be a miracle to see Oliver it Ekman Larson to me in this situation, like the Coyotes were committed to the rebuild. GM Bill Armstrong came in and said this is one of the first moves he made. And now he's in Vancouver and it feels like if they want to rebuild, they have to do it without that contract. And, it, and like the, the imagery that popped in my head was like hot potato. Right. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you're right. Popped in. But it, and it's unfortunate for a player like yeah. OEL, who at the peak of his career oh, was so was, good was Norris worthy and and now to see where he is today and and we already mentioned Garland that he's had better see and I'm hoping this season's just, just a fluke for him some players will have kind of an off year and it's also hard when you're on a team that isn't doing right, well situations um, and all that. you know it I think matters. I think if Garland was with maybe a different group that he would be playing yeah, hey, 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 let's the way Connor Garland plays is the way he plays. I mean, he's not going to change for who he plays with, who he plays for, or who he's playing under as a coach. No question, he's going to work hard. He just needs to be put in a little different situation. And with the Arizona Coyotes, he had top six minutes. He was power play minutes. He was expected to be a guy that was going to get them goals offensively. So we got offensive zone start. He is not that guy in Vancouver. They don't want him to be. They haven't asked him to be. He's a bottom six guy. And I don't know if it's a good fit for him right now. And if they make a coaching change, his role may change. And the way he plays may change. His ability to uh, to get on the board again could change. So I, I still think there's stuff left in the tank for Connor Garland. I totally. just don't think it's going to be in this situation. Yeah, hmm. neither do I. One last thing about Vancouver. They wore their reverse retros tonight. Seeing them in action, what do you guys think? Oh, huge fan. What do you? It's a lumberjack on a jersey? Buddy. Bemidji High School Lumberjacks. There it is. <laughs> Pride of the Northland, Bemidji, Somehow Minnesota. We tied it back to Minnesota. Yeah, um, figure it out. Did, do we, did anybody know what happened to Bemidji State's women's hockey team the other night? <laughs> they, they, they no! Lost, they lost like 12 to 1. 
the, How did you just pull that out of I just I, I noticed that they lost 12-1 to like <laughs> Head the, coach the, Jim Scanlon. Keep up the good work, Jim. <laughs> it's a noticeable score. Keep like up, when U of A loses in Pac-12 play. Exactly. When, yeah, when U of A loses into the U It was a lumberjack Utes. on a hockey sweater. I'm all in. Love it. I, and by the way, I'll go a step further. Love the colors. The blue and the green. Yeah. Love, love those it. colors. Yeah, love it. Do like it. Yeah, the touch, it, the touch for me is the cream. The the cream. It's there's not, no white. Like the it's not white. It's cream. Stuff. Yeah. And for you, for, coming from a team who has, and and sorry, Canuck fans out there, because I know they're all listening, some of the worst uniforms in the history of the National Hockey Ooh. League. Yeah. With that, the the oh, yeah. orange, black, and oh, yellow, yeah. and whatever that Brutal. V thing was, horrific uniform. This was solid. They've had some bad uniforms. Yeah. Those those are the worst of them. Like, but the stick thing was. That was terrible. You didn't too. like the stick you know, thing. No, you know what no. you loved about the jerseys is the accents on the players' names. Yes. Yeah. Is Nils that Hoglander. an umlaut or what is that called? It's not called. It's just punctuation in Swedish. Oh. But props to the Canucks for doing it. Yeah. Because yeah. it drives me crazy. I, these guys know by now. Like we we better do that because it drives me crazy when we when we misspell European names because we decide oh we're just going to Americanize them well, as, as someone it's a name as You're... someone with a specialized name like lowercase e capital p See? I very much appreciate when jerseys do there stuff like that yep it was great yeah it was great yeah uh, a lot of comments about trading ba- trading for Garland again get him back <laughs> not gonna happen Craig's yeah, crushing no. everyone's dreams no, sorry no, probably nope. hard to also know. a lot of comments about PD's ankles. Yeah, Which, and I've been wearing really. Uh, it, <laughs> this is a good. This is a topic. Is that goddamn Die Hard logo that's been in the lower third for the past two weeks? Did I not come with fancy socks for two every, weeks straight? Every and, or Never saw or them. we'd be or we'd be in the other. And there was the die. See, with the Die Hard thing, I could. Well, now it's there. Oh. The, there, the Die Hard thing was covering my socks, and I didn't have to. Now I come in with the the ankles again, you and I pull get, your pen up a little. I no. want to see if you have cankles. Okay. I, I don't no. have cankles, but. Uh, I will. I, uh, I just forgot the oh socks again. Damn it! So yes, I will do better. I will be better. <laughs> will be be better. The, That's our motto. Again? I you think the socks again. Yes, I've got a whole yeah. drawer full of really Sean, colorful you can put good the logo socks. Up for the next show. I okay. think the people like ankles for some bizarre. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was the most like the way you. I kind of feel like you should take advantage of it. You should have like subtle messaging on your ankles. Oh, I've got great show. socks. I don't know what you're gonna do, but Bedard. I mean, yeah, something maybe. Minnesota related, probably. <laughs> yeah, Bedard. true. Oh yeah. my god, that Bedard. was the most pedious sat up all night. So tonight we're watching the game, and in our recliners, <laughs> it's like you just get lower. And then at one yeah. point, I look over, and <laughs> PD and I are like fully, they, like horizontal. I can yeah. vouch for this too because I'm sitting, I'm watching the two of them talk together. It was almost like pillow talk. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. wait, wait. And, <laughs> Uh, I will say this, that, but Heidi, we talked I'm about saying that we we talk about me. <laughs> I go to bed at eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. This was damn late. I'm sorry. There's more and furniture like, recliners. I'm so tired. I was like, yeah, we need to freaking sit up. The more <laughs> the more furniture recliners, I, they recline. That's what it's in they the do. name. Yep, it's true. <laughs> yeah, so I took full unreal. advantage of the They're recliner. Unreal. Seriously. And the game didn't have me like on the edge of my seat like we had hoped in a, in a tight hockey game. I was not hooting and hollering. It was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Hooting and hollering. Hooting and hollering, boy, howdy. Well, if you want some more furniture for your home, including those amazing recliners or the seats we're sitting in tonight, which are always extremely comfortable, check out more furniture. They have a cyber week going on right now. You can save up to 50% off. So definitely check out more furniture. (laughs) I noticed you switched from Perrier to Pellegrino, by the way. Oh, my goodness. And uh, speaking of diehards, you should become one if you're not already uh, let us know if you're a diehard in the chat right now. Drop a drop a hashtag diehard. We love seeing that. Um, and if you're a diehard, there's a ton of perks. There's a diehard only. What would you call it? A zip up? Is zip up yeah, appropriate? D- zip up skin. I would have okay. worn it tonight I mean, if I would have had it. It's not here that. yet. The talk of the office tonight has been the hoodies, which hoodies. are available to everyone. But if you're a diehard, this week. but if you're a diehard, you get twenty percent off. Karen, all I, I wonder, did anybody get the diehard zip up? I did. You did too. It's on the That's way. My kids. Can't wait. Love well, for it. your kid, I'm wearing Love it. Love it. Um, the so diehard zip up. The, the hoodies, oh, are, the hoodies are available. Others. There's now Phoenix merch available. Is, there is Phoenix merch, which I'm excited. I ordered. I, think I ordered that. I ordered the Phoenix hoodie and the Phoenix T-shirt. Um, oh yeah, he's back there. I think um, I ordered that. I don't remember. So become a diehard. So you can you can get 20 percent off in the locker. You can get 20 percent off on events. You can read the 
diehard content on the website. Oh yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, read, but read Craig's stories. They're they're un- so if you're not a diehard, they are unlocked. So just know that if you haven't been a diehard, they are mostly unlocked unless it has the little diehard Christina's tag. Christina's here. Um, what? I was just reading who's all the diehards. I love here. seeing all the diehards in the chat. I know, this makes lots. me so happy. Thank you all so much Pat, um, for being nice. a diehard. So, like I said, check out those new hoodies and t-shirts including the Die Hard Only merch in the phnxlocker.com. You can also click on the link below in our description to get there fast. And the holidays are coming up, so if you need gifts, I'm I'm not kidding. Over Cyber yeah. Weekend, I placed four separate orders. Like, mm-hmm. I've gotten one <laughs> of them so far. <laughs> so uh, There's yeah. a lot of phnx t- stuff tis, under the tree. Just the season. Tis the See, season. Karen did get her zip up. My Die Hard zip up. Amazing. The die hard zip up. Can't wait. Love it. Um. Yeah, and B's made a good point. Double diehards being here this late. Thank you all so much for being here uh, this late with us. Please like this video if you're watching live or watching later. We now are going to do some vampire talk, as we promised. Can we dim the lights? No. Kidding. No. Um, and this was a, a video that the Arizona Coyotes tweeted out before the game. Do you want to? Well, no, I think we need to set up what, what, why the, okay. the people that didn't see okay. before they had right. to go to Craig's story. story. You're right. Yep. So you you cue no this Craig whole thing. Craig did it no <laughs> Craig wrote the damn story so <laughs> Jacob chicken has got that unusual diet he yes. it's an ancestry diet where he wants to eat like his ancestors and this is a real thing because I googled it because I thought it would, he misspoke and he meant farm fresh or organic no he meant raw so he's eating raw meat like raw liver and raw beef hearts. <sighs> And such, from that conversation, we started talking about the potential that Jacob Chikrin might possibly be a vampire. And I have a new conspiracy theory okay, go about that. why Jacob Chikrin doesn't want to play for the Coyotes anymore. All of the howling, the, were- the, the werewolves, werewolf. the lichens, yeah, the and lichens. the werewolves. The lichens, the lichens and the vampires and obviously don't get along if you watch Underworld. Every time the Coyotes score and the whole arena is howling, how do you think that makes him feel? Yeah. Yeah. He needs to leave. What were the two? Leave. Team Jacob or Team something? Team Jacob, Team Edward. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Tying it into Twilight. At what point, was, has he always been a vampire? Was he bitten at some point during I, his I don't know. <laughs> It's probably, I, I I need to do some investigative reporting. I don't on this, know, obviously. But now he's got the slick back hair. Did you like yeah, interview with a vampire? Hair, like, you know, he's, he's eating thing. bloody meat. I think I saw. A I mean, he's probably eating the raw skin. meat because it's bloody. So, so, what did you say? A little sparkle on his skin. Like yeah, like, Team <laughs> Edward. So, <laughs> as he as he left today, as he left to get on the team bus today, this is the video that was shot by oh the Arizona Coyotes and their own Twitter feed. Uh-oh. So, and the question is, what's in the what's box? What's in the box? What's what? in? What do you the think's box? in the box, peeps? So we chat, have our own thoughts. Chat, chime in. What's in the box? What's in the box, or as Brad Pitt would say, "What's in the box? <laughs> no, what's, what's in the box?" And if you get that one, <laughs> do you? I may get that one. The Brad Pitt. What's in the box? No, no one. <laughs> What's in the box, man? Yeah, What's seven. in the box? It's seven. seven. It's seven. <sighs> Gwyneth Paltrow. Morgan and that's going to be what I'm saying is in the box. It, it, it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Yes, it is. <laughs> I didn't mean to give the movie away Kevin to Spacey seven. Too. Whoops. Yeah, you really gave but the that, attack. It's 20 years no old. Don't watch that movie anymore. It's 20 years old. <laughs> the comments are literally <laughs> killing me right okay. now. Okay, Sean, the pause. What's, What's in, the in, box? The box? in the box? What's in the box? I mean, it's... it's, it's couple of options maybe some four peak chicken tenders it might be a i don't a, a think that's a burrito express uh burrito, burrito express. express max right Breakfast now just Supreme. woke up like <laughs> max, max, what max is- <laughs> you might have just taken a, a, a hazy a four peaks hazy and just poured it into the thing he's just he's gonna drink it Sean, up like you got the bowl. job already yeah <laughs> chick would not yeah, maybe a human heart things. i don't know not eat. what do you think's in the box i already said it gwyneth paltrow's head i went i went right out of the <laughs> you movie still think yes okay <laughs> Leo, what's in, in the, the box? box? I just picture a like a <laughs> a beating heart. Wow! <laughs> Still like, beating heart. Like a cow heart. Not just even bites heart. into it before the game. Yeah. Just, uh, just to give him energy. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? And Craig. Craig's been sitting on this one for well, hours. Well, you know, we talked about this being an ancestral way of eating. So I'm, I'm convinced that he carries some soil from you <laughs> know from the homeland own... that he keeps in his coffin where he sleeps as well. You got <laughs> wow. a little bit, bit of soil from. Wow. The, ancestral wow. from the homeland so that that's my theory wow oh my God. can we uh, yeah 
Oh my god. Uh, we, we, <laughs> Fox 2001 said it's raw steak. Um, I, it could be. Got, Loyal Sif said shark fin or something. Interesting. They are in Vancouver. Yeah, it's, it's in Vancouver. Definitely water. not garlic. Water. Definitely not, not, garlic. Garlic. not garlic. Not garlic. <laughs> no garlic. <laughs> I should have asked him that. That should have been my follow up question. So, he was talking about the food. You ever put garlic on it? If he had gone, like, I, feel, I know, like that, I like it so... coiled from me. I was like, you the hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the chances Jacob Chickren's coming on our show okay, anytime so soon? We, get up, to say, we should get him on. Talking. Yeah, he ain't walking and talk talking. But, it, but you, you do like thirty seconds of like hockey, and he's like, "Oh yeah, just <laughs> another ro- and it, like." And then you're like, "So." <laughs> By the way, I, I just feel so bad for him because, like, everybody who's here watching and now is in on this show, like, when the Coyotes come back to town and any, anyone sees Jacob Chikrin, like, they're, he's going to say, like, what? One of the questions you can ask him is, is this okay for you to walk in the sun? Also, yeah, yeah. Let's, not, let's not forget, I focused all on the howling, but let's not forget, Arizona, it's sunny, like, 300 all the time. No wonder he wants out. He's yeah. <laughs> talking about going to Ottawa. Do they By have the way, I don't want to make, we're not making fun of him because he was, he had a lot of fun with this interview. We, we laughed a oh lot my God. during this interview. No, I he, mean, he was hilarious. He's like, my family I, thinks I'm crazy. If I could eat like that and like be, have like the physique and the, the <laughs> yes. work ethic that he has, this we, is not we, diminishing his no. skill or his work ethic no. or his, his conditioning. We talk about my ankles. <laughs> if, if I was built like Jacob Chikrin, I literally, not kidding, would never wear a shirt, like ever, <laughs> to anything. Like I would find it, I'd find right now like, oh, I just spilled something on my shirt and I'd be taking it off. <laughs> like, are you out of your mind? The yeah, guy's no, absolutely he's, yeah, he's ripped. A physical specimen. He's a, he is, he is probably the most athletic player I've ever seen come through the Coyotes. And I'm not making that, the kid is jacked. Yep. So no, we are not making fun of him. We are having fun. Yep. Uh, Charles said, no way chicks on walking and talking and have to be at night. And that's past Petey's bedtime. <laughs> yeah. And then JMT Truth. said, I still want chicken to be traded, but this joke can never die. <laughs> Craig, Craig, next time you're going to you talk to him, you're going to have to wear like a, like a low cut V-neck. <laughs> see if he starts eyeing up. See if he starts. You guys see a little drool start driving down. And you're just yeah. eyeing up your neck. I can't. I knew this was going to like veer off the rails, but oh, it's just so good every oh, time. Oh, God. Oh, it's so good every time. Oh, man. I don't even know. I don't even know how. Skirt. Get us back on track. Um, all right. Well, let's get off of Jacob Jurgen talk and let's get into our weekly or it seems to be every day lately, but it's because it's there's a lot going on. Our ASU hockey talk oh, boy. for a couple minutes here because there's been some drama uh, with ASU's weekend in Denver. So, Craig, I'll hand it over to you for this one. Well, everybody probably knows by now that they got swept. They they. Didn't, it wasn't very competitive tonight. They were down 4 nothing after two periods. TJ Semtefeller came out of the net for the first time this season. And Ben Cross got a period. They lost 5-2 in the second game. In the first game, I'm not sure if any of you watched it. I watched it. Score was 2-2 with a minute 58 left. Puck pops, it, pops into the air in front of the ASU goal. And defenseman Tim Lovell went to bat it away with his glove at the same time that a player from Denver came behind him whacked his glove, knocked the puck into the net. Officials waved it off, said high, you know, high stick, put the puck in the net, called it a no-go. Denver challenges it. They decide that Lovell knocked it in with his glove. Well, and that's basically what they told Greg Powers. Uh, it was close, but he knocked it in with his glove. So nothing about the stick. Nothing about the stick making contact with the glove. Nothing about that at all. Powers challenges it, loses it. They lose the game. That's a critical loss for ASU. If they just get that game to overtime, the way the pairwise works now, they get 45 out of those possible 100 points just for getting the game to overtime. Denver only gets 55 out of it. That's the way it works in pairwise if you go to OT because they you know, they wanted to reward a team for getting into overtime in those situations. They don't want you to you know just lose out completely when you go to three-on-three overtime. So two more minutes, ASU gets a really big boost in the points against a team that's going to win a lot of games. Instead, they lose out. I know we've talked a lot about this call. It's tricky, right? Because there's there's not a black and white rule. That's the problem. To me, the officials in this situation need to look at the totality of the play and make that judgment call. And I think you can, but it's not it's not written black and white in the rule book. So what do you do? He didn't tap the puck. 
with a stick. It was the glove that actually hit. You can see that, but it's actually the, the stick that's directing the puck. So do you call a high stick or a slash? If you do, well, Denver didn't have possession, so you can't blow the whistle until they have possession. So is it a good goal? And then Denver's shorthanded. I don't know what you do with that play, but it absolutely feels wrong. I think you can step back objectively and say Denver shouldn't be able to win on that play. Literally speechless here because I don't know. I, I'm looking at, I'm trying to look at it from the other side. Doesn't touch the puck with a stick. It's not yeah. high sticking. Yeah. It isn't. So I'm not a referee. Don't know the rules. Don't know the rule book. To me, I, I see it like you. I probably would have liked it seen called a high stick or a slash. Goal accounts. Arizona State's on the power play for the last two minutes of the game. But I don't know the rule. Like I've never seen anything like that before. And if Lovell doesn't go to grab it and he hits it with a stick, it's clearly no goal because it's 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 almost perpendicular to the ice. Yeah, you saw how high. I mean, it was. he's it's not just a little high stick; it's three feet over the crossbar. Yeah. So if, if Lovell doesn't put his hand up, then maybe it goes in and it's no goal and it goes to overtime. I I don't know, but that defenseman, you see that puck going there in that situation when you're protecting the net front, it's get the puck out of the way. Yep. That's what you do. Yep. If not for the high stick, the puck doesn't go in. I'm st I feel terrible for ASU. Unfortunately, where they're at now after losing these two, they're I don't want to say win out, but they got to win a hell of a lot of hockey games. They do cuz they're what are they now? 1 and 7 on the road. You've got New Hampshire coming up. You need to sweep that. That's not a good team. You need to sweep at New Hampshire now, but you got to yeah, you got to get wins. You got to yeah, you, you got to get a lot of you wins. You got to rule mullet right now. And they've had two really tough road losses against good teams. Yep. Well, Duluth really late. Yes, Duluth exactly. the, and Denver. The irony is that there was a goal tonight that the video review system wasn't working, yeah, so the call on it. the ice just stood because they couldn't review it. Sorry, our bad. The system's down. Oops. Yeah. Hmm. So Unreal. anyway, uh, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there is some gray area there, right? I get that. Yeah. But when you look at the play, you're just like, no, that's not right. Something's not right. It's not right. Yeah. And it's, this is the kind of loss, I hate to say it because we, we got a lot of hockey left, but that's the kind of loss that can cost a team a, a tournament bid. <laughs> there's echo i echo. obviously echo. have yeah. pulled up my phone um i there was a really funny comment from spencer earlier lovell's hand is in chikrin's box oh i'm not comfortable with that let's move on <laughs> okay fine i thought it was funny spencer my goodness and then hockey racers wants to know is craig wearing a khl hat from the team Ilya fedotov used to play for i am team? good for you good, good pick Wait, good pick bonus points if you can actually pronounce the name of it what is it? But we can't. I guess we can't hear him. Yeah, no. Why don't you just <laughs> you tell spell us? it out phonetically? No. Why don't you just tell us? Nizhny Movgorod. Wow, there it that is. That was the most Craig pronunciation I've what ever heard. What would we heard. do without Craig for a show like this with all these foreign players? Honestly, names? truly. Um, well, ASU has a big challenge ahead, and you can go support them in person at Mullet Arena, and when you do so, you should buy those tickets on game time, especially on the day of the game, six, save 60%. The Coyotes are finally coming back to town yes. next week, like no. they're like soon, in, in less than a week. They're finally coming home. You can get those tickets on game time as well. Check on the day of the game. Buy your parking pass, buy your ticket all in one on game time. Check the day of the game. Save up to 60% when you do. And when you do, use the link below in our description when you buy. That helps us out the most. And we love hearing about everybody's success using game time to buy their tickets. So with that being said, I think we should look at the upcoming schedule for the Coyotes and uh, see that home game on the horizon. Alberta is all that's left. Mm -hmm. Calgary on Monday, Edmonton on Wednesday, and Boston on Friday. That's a tough week ahead. I'm not going to be in studio much with you guys after this week. Finally, Pete. I know, you're just going to say it is. <laughs> oh, shucks. Because we're going to be in studio on Monday, Leah. We're going to be in studio on Wednesday. And you know what other day this week we're going to be? Can I say this yet? Sure. We'll what? be in studio on Thursday as well. We are? Thursday morning. I don't read the emails. I have no, literally no idea. We know this. We have a special guest. On we Thursday? Have... Yes. On Thursday. Next week. Yep. Next week. Do you know who? I, know, I think I know. Did you do a multiple choice? I think I know. <laughs> I think I do know. I didn't know when. All right. But it's Thursday now. So I got to come Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
Thursday's a good show, though. It is. Because we're going to have Tempe Mayor Corey Woods on the show. Yep. So let me throw that out wow. there. So That'll Tempe Mayor. Tempe Mayor Corey Woods. Can we talk show. about the Tempe Ted? <laughs> I think that's what we're going to do. Hey, okay, cool. I got, I mean, we, we got could, some questions. We could talk about, you know. We got whatever, some questions. Whatever is next election bid. I don't know. We got don't, some questions okay. about it. And I just want the facts. Just give me the facts. Yep. Okay. Mayor. Cool. Tempe Mayor, Mayor Corey Woods Corey on Thursday. Woods, Thursday, 1030 a.m. Set a reminder now. That's awesome. It's Set aside an hour on your work calendar. Block it off. Say you have 10 30, right? 10 30 yep. a.m. Say you have an important meeting and uh, join us Thursday, 10 30. Um, it's going to be a really good show. So we're really And I excited. don't, I, I want to say this because we've talked about this arena a lot and we're starting to see some differing views and things on the internet, social media, and so forth saying differing views on the internet. Yeah, I know. Oh. Hard to believe, huh? I, I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this is a fluff piece at all. I, I like, we've got questions. Like, Let's ask the guy that can answer the questions. We will. So let's, yep. yeah, I don't want to think that people are, I want to know. Like there's stuff I really want to know. Yep. Yep. So let's inform people. Absolutely. Cool. So really excited about that one. And uh, when it happens, the Coyotes will finally be back from this 14 game road trip that feels so beyond endless. Like I just can't believe it. I seriously shout out to the team and the staff for enduring this and the the broadcasters as well who've been traveling um, this entire time just absolutely unbelievable uh, let's pull up the map I'm tired of looking at it oh my gosh two games left one province to go <laughs> at least there's a short distance between the two for them um, and short distance from Vancouver as well so hopefully four five and three four five and three on this four not what any of us would have predicted I know. 11 points so far with three games to go Two games to go. Two games to go. Yeah. Two games to go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, they will hit the twenty road game mark at the end of this trip. They'll have played twenty road games. So That's insane. Half two months into the season. Yeah, basically half, half the road games. Eight of the next ten will be at home after that. Man, that's crazy. A lot um, of mullet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, with this last night, we got another loss punch on the punch card. Let's take a look. Four straight losses. Uh, not the first time this season, so we'll see if they'll mix in a win or two on this line. But if not, then oh well. HK till draft day, as we said. Um, but as we know, the punches do not indicate a top pick. Yeah, that's right. And Craig, <laughs> before we went live, said, and it, this is the unfortunate part about tonight. Van Anaheim got a point and a lot. An extra overtime or shootout loss. I can't yeah. remember. Um, tonight, Chicago won. So Ottawa won. So they could have been in thirty first place if they had lost. If they had game. lost, in, if if Karel Vimelka did not stop, stop Elias Pettersson in the final minutes, great for morale. Great for us to talk about. Bad for the tank. So the Coyotes could have been in thirty first tonight. Instead, they're in 29th. They're still in the mix in that bottom mix. But uh, if they played this well on this fourteen game road trip. Who knows what's what's ahead? But yeah, seriously, what maybe are they it's do time to deal some. Uh, if if you're Assets? if you're a cold weather market looking for a defenseman who is in great shape with a great diet, <laughs> and if you're a northern climate market yes. where there's less sunlight, less sunlight, that might be optimal. and less howling. <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Don't howl a whole lot in Buffalo. Just, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, do they have the sun there either? No sun no, there. Not just much. No, just Sorry. no. Um, Summertime they do. Yeah. Sean, love it in the summer. Beautiful. Great in the yeah. summer. Winter, no. Let's get out of here. Of it's snow. late. Any it is final late. any final thoughts? Yeah, Can great to see anything? the power play come back tonight. I think that was the biggest key coming tonight. Vimelka continues to play great. Power play gets a goal. Chicken's back on, on on the scoreboard. I think those are all good things. Let's get him back to the mallet soon. Yeah, cutters are coming home soon. Coming home. Get to cover live hockey again. They're coming home. Wow. They're coming home. Can't <laughs> wait. Can't wait. Um, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in live with us or listening later. But those of you live, it's almost midnight, so we appreciate you. Um, like, subscribe, follow, leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts, and follow PHNX Sports across all the social platforms. Like Sean said, check out PHNX Sun Devils, uh, so you can see Sean on this side of the camera talk some ASU hoops tomorrow, um, and. PHNX Sports, I mean, there's stuff all day, every day, literally anything you can think of. And that's why it's a great time to become a diehard as well, because this is peak sports season right now. We got almost everything going on. Um, and even the baseball offseason, there's tons of stuff that they are covering over at PHNX D-backs as right. well. Jesse Freeman heading to the winter heading readings. Heading to San Diego. Good. <laughs> 
jealous Seriously. heading heading there tomorrow so tons of stuff going on and as always please follow us on twitter at peach next underscore coyotes you can follow each of us at s peters hockey at leah merrill at craig s morgan at sean underscore to pause who is seven followers away from 500 so let's, let's make get it him happen. there i'm gonna say it again at sean underscore to pause follow 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 um thank you all so much for tuning in We'll be back Monday for the post-game show after the Calgary Flames game. But until then, everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend.